In 1949, 300 forward-thinking Mississippi leaders gathered at the Heidelberg Hotel in Jackson, determined to bring the business community together and improve economic opportunities in this state and the quality of life for its citizens. That meeting led to the formation of the Mississippi Economic Council, a group focused on enacting transformational change for our state. Since that day, MEC, the state's Chamber of Commerce, has worked diligently and tirelessly to unify members statewide and develop a business climate for success. The task has been challenging and never ending, but MEC members have remained committed to the cause. In fact, seven decades later, nearly 90 of the original charter members remain active in MEC today. Focusing on broad-based, bipartisan initiatives and a united business front, MEC has led the charge for legislative change in public education, tort reform, transportation funding, workforce enhancement, and other important issues facing our state. MEC continues to be the voice of business. The organization is stronger than ever as we work together to provide a strong and sustainable economy. With more than 11,000 members across the state, MEC works to shrink the miles between our citizens and bring leaders together for a common agenda to move Mississippi forward. Today is our 70th celebration. It's amazing. We, MEC started in 1949 and we are celebrating the fact that we really have continued to be an organization that focuses on making sure that we have a statewide sense of business working together to make us better. The best thing about it is we, we did a little research. We have 90 charter members that were members of MEC from the very beginning that are still active in some fashion with us today. And that's really a, a great testament to, to what our members continue to do. Uh, excited about being the new chair. Uh, it's quite an honor. I appreciate our leadership uh, allowing me to do this. We have a lot of great uh, plans ahead for us, certainly in this year to come, but even further uh, as we move forward with MEC. Good afternoon and welcome to the 70th annual meeting for the Mississippi Economic Council. What a beautiful day to be celebrating 70 years of making a difference in Mississippi. We are so glad that you're here. As the video just said, in 1949, a group of leaders from all across this state came together to chart a new course because they, quite frankly, weren't satisfied with the ordinary. But they knew working together they could do something that was extraordinary. And 70 years later, we still have that same spirit among our members. And in fact, there are almost 90 charter members today that are active in MEC that were there when we started. You'll find a list of those on your table, it's this list here, and what it says is it says there are a lot of companies that still care about this state. Now interestingly, some of the names might not be the same as they were when they started at MEC 70 years ago, but the spirit of making sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do to make Mississippi better still exists. Now during our 70 year history, MEC has had four presidents. M.B. Swayze served from 1949 to 1968. Bob Pittman guided MEC from 1968 to 1998. And then Blake Wilson guided the organization from 1998 to 2017. Each of them not only built upon, but worked to strengthen the foundation of our organization, allowing MEC to truly become the one voice of business all throughout Mississippi. However, the real formula for our success is written by the volunteer leaders that are committed to MEC. For the past year, Dan Rollins has held the reins as the chair of MEC. 
He is chairman of the board and chief executive officer of Bancorp South, which is headquartered in Tupelo. I've seen firsthand Dan's unwavering commitment to create a better state where businesses can grow and be successful. Now, Dan's not originally from Mississippi, but as the old saying goes, he got here as quick as he could. And since arriving, he's wasted little time making sure that he is active in community and statewide organizations and has embraced our state and shown an immense dedication to making sure that we are enhancing all of Mississippi's opportunities. Will you please join me in welcoming Dan Rollins. Good afternoon. I also want to welcome you here today to Mississippi Economic Council's annual meeting. We're really glad that you're here to celebrate the 70th anniversary, 70 years of enhancing Mississippi's business community. Your support is what allows MEC to work every day to identify opportunities that make our state more competitive. It's the vision, passion, and commitment, and discipline of our members that continue to make a difference throughout Mississippi. Each year, the volunteer leaders that make up our Board of Directors dedicate time and energy to ensure we are good stewards of your resources. At your table this morning and on the screens, you will see a list of leaders that have been nominated to serve as the directors and officers for the MEC Board of Directors for 2018-2019. Yes, ma'am. We have a motion has been made to accept the nominations by acclamation. All in favor say aye. Any opposed and the motion carries. I want to thank each of our board members for their willingness to serve. These leaders, along with those who serve on our foundation boards and the MEC Board of Governors, value your input. They value the input of all members as MEC serves as the voice of business in our state. In providing that voice, MEC strives to maintain a strong relationship with our legislature and state leaders. I want to take a moment to welcome our Governor, Phil Bryant, our Lieutenant Governor, Tate Reeves, and Speaker Philip Gunn, and all of our elected officials in attendance today. We owe a special thanks to each of, our, to each of you for your service to our state. During the past year, with the help of your legislative leaders, we've been able to enact some strong public policy that is allowing Mississippi to continue to enhance our opportunities. Speaking as the voice of business, MEC advocates for issues designed to build a brighter future for Mississippi. During the special legislative session this past fall, the legislature passed measures that will provide more than $200 million annually for transportation infrastructure and improvements. As an organization, we understand how important this is for the economic growth of our state. The involvement and dedication of MEC members played is a vital role in helping take a significant step forward in addressing some of the crucial needs for the roads and bridges in our state. MEC will continue to focus on ways to provide sustainable long-term funding to address future needs. During the regular session this year, two key MEC priorities received legislative approval. The first was the Landowner Protection Act to allow companies to assure that they will be protected if they are taking the proper steps to provide a safe environment for their customers. And the second, the legislature for the first time has dedicated new funding for assessing high school students' career readiness, adding a much needed emphasis on the importance of career and technical education. As I stated earlier, MEC's leadership values the opinion of every member of the organization, and one of the most efficient ways to receive your input is through our MEC statewide tour every year. In late 2018 and early 2019, the tour traveled to 20 cities, networking with over 2,000 businesses and community leaders, gathering feedback on important issues that you find important. Our foundation programs are continuing to flourish. This year, we've set a new record for the number of STAR students to be recognized for their exemplary and extraordinary academic achievement. The Mississippi Scholars and Mississippi Tech Masters program continue to grow stronger, and interest in our Leadership Mississippi program remains at an all-time high. These things do not happen by chance. Our great and dedicated staff, as well as our enthusiastic and engaged board members, drive them. I want to thank each of them for their commitment to MEC and to our state. Still, none of these achievements is possible without the 11,000 MEC members from the 1,100 member companies across the state. 
It is indeed an honor to serve as your chair, but I would not have been able to do this without the support of my wife, Becky. I truly appreciate her support over the past year. I could not have served in the position without the support of the MEC staff and our CEO. Scott is finishing his first full year as, our, as the leader of this organization, and I'm excited about our future with his leadership. Please join me in thanking the MEC staff for all of their tireless efforts. Finally, I'm honored to work with almost 5,000 professionals across eight states. Here in Mississippi, our home state, the Bancorp South team of almost a little over 2,000 individuals is actively working every day to move our state forward. They make me proud to come to work every morning. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a wonderful experience to be a part of this organization, and I cannot wait to see the opportunities that await the Mississippi Economic Council. It's truly been an honor. Now I have the privilege of introducing the person that will step into the role of MEC Chair, Lex Taylor. Lex's roots are deep in Mississippi. He is the Chairman of the Board of the Taylor Group. He serves as President of the Taylor Group, Taylor Machine Works, and Taylor Holdings. He joined the family-owned business at age 15, learning all aspects of the company before joining the management team. Lex is active in community and Lex is very active in the community and across the state promoting economic development, education and philanthropic initiatives. I look forward to supporting Lex as he joins and leads MEC. Thank you so much Dan, please uh, hang with me just a minute. Becky, if you will, also please step on the stage. I just want to say a personal note to Dan for his leadership to the association this year. It's been exemplary. He's done a phenomenal job. He's showed leadership and uh, particularly in the internal side of the uh, association with uh, governance uh, needs and uh, uh, our, our whole transition over to uh, this first year with Scott. And uh, Dan, uh, on behalf of the entire association, we thank you. We appreciate your leadership. We have a plaque for you here. Picture. The plaque will uh, hopefully give Dan some uh, reflection uh, on his leadership with us and uh, Dan our uh, appreciation for uh, you and your service. Let's give Dan a round of applause. Becky, we have a gift so I can speak to this microphone real quick. We have a gift for you. And hopefully that will That's give you nice. remembrance and this all for you. And we thank, thank you. you. We appreciate you lending Dan to us this year. You want him again? Yes. <laughs> okay. I am all about that. <laughs> but Becky, thank you and we appreciate our token of appreciation to you. We hope it will be something you can cherish over the years. Appreciate thank it. you. Let's get the right. Let's get a picture real quick. I'll be brief. Um, I want to, again, uh, from my standpoint, welcome you all here to our uh, 70th anniversary celebration. 70 years, MEC. Thank you all for being here with us and participating in this. Uh, we're not successful if we're not working together for a common goal of making Mississippi stronger and providing opportunities for all of our citizens to be successful. Speaking as the voice of business, MEC continues to focus on creating an economic climate uh, throughout the state which allows businesses uh, of all sizes to grow, become profitable, and to give back to our community. I was fortunate enough to gain uh, an understanding of this importance uh, of giving back. Uh, during my days when I participated in the Leadership Mississippi, we have many Leadership Mississippi uh, participants uh, for this year here with us. Now, um, Kathy, I go way back when that started. So uh, it was a great time for me in networking and uh, growing my communication skills and understanding how the state of Mississippi works. It offers skills, this, uh, this uh, leadership Mississippi offers skills to help this current session and, and those in the past and those will be in the future, that will be in the future to advance their professional careers. Uh, but more importantly, it helps them understand the value of working together for the betterment of Mississippi. 
Everything we do at MEC builds on the founding principles, as you see here, for over these 70 years, to build a coalition to focus on fairness and equality, to speak as an, a united business front. Uh, using our long-standing pillars of advocacy, research, resources, and leadership, this provides the foundation needed to develop a strategic approach to our future. MEC does not shy away from tough issues. Working with our state elected officials and legislators, we strive to achieve strong uh, public policy in economic development, in education, uh, in workforce development, a fair judicial system, uh, and taxation and regulatory balance. We must ensure Mississippi has a competitive business climate. In addition, addition to honoring Mississippi's best and brightest students with today's star student uh, and teacher recognition programs uh, and the Mississippi Scholars Tech Masters uh, programs, it continues to grow. Today, these programs are taking place in 81 counties within our state. Hey folks, look up here. We only have 82 counties. So this is a huge footprint and the uh, commitment M uh, MEC has to education and the values we try to instill in these young people. Uh, that is a, a, phenomenal, a, a phenomenal accomplishment. And just look at this turnout here uh, today. Our students will help shape the future of our state and providing a pathway for success will pay dividends in generations to come. As we celebrate our 70th anniversary, the state's Chamber of Commerce, speaking with one voice, we continue to champion Mississippi's business community and be a leader in developing a long-term strategy for driving positive change in our state. I'm excited to serve as your chair uh, for this coming year and look forward to sharing our vision at our events throughout this next year. With your support as members of MEC, let me stress members of MEC, if you're not one, please become one. We want you in the fold. Uh, this will strengthen our reach to cultivate resources necessary to position us to meet the needs of the statewide business community in today and for years to come. I want to thank my family and my team here from the Tato Group of Companies and support, uh, supporting me. I would really like to especially thank my mother that's with us here today, Mitzi Taylor. She had a large contribution in making me. I thank you. <laughs> also, I want to express my sincere thanks and love to my wife, Margaret, at the table here. Margaret, I appreciate your commitment. She served with me through many board terms, through many chairs, and here we go again, baby. <laughs> Thank you for support and love. I know that by working together, we can enhance our opportunities and create an economic climate that benefits all of our citizens. Working together, our state can accomplish great things. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 64th governor of the great state of Mississippi, Phil Bryant. Well, good afternoon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know you needed that stretch. It's uh, amazing to think how quickly time has passed. Almost eight years now. And Deborah and I began on this journey. I'm sorry she's not here today. She had made a promise to be in Raleigh, Mississippi, and you know Deborah, she keeps a promise. She said, besides, I've heard you before. Yeah, she has. What a remarkable job she has done. We've had great first ladies, but I can tell you, I love this one. So yeah, MEC, it's been a, been a while. I got involved in the 1990s. I know I don't look that old, but I think I was there before Blake got here. I remember Blake invited me, my first speech at MEC, to talk about this new thing called a website. 
Yeah, we had just created one. I was state auditor then, and, and we didn't have a website. We didn't have a portal, and we created one, and Blake couldn't find anybody else to speak, and he said, well, I'll just get the state auditor, and, 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 and like most people, he was surprised that I knew that much about IT and and how we were going to do paperless audits, and we did, and how now in the state of Mississippi, if you look at uh, Mississippi Works, an award-winning app that the rest of the country now wants. I love to go to national governor's meetings now, and, and they talk about workforce development, and they say, well, how do you keep up with the number of jobs in Mississippi? You always know exactly how many opens you have. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Pull out that iPhone. Mississippi Works. Says, where'd you get that? We made it. Oh, yeah, even our apps win awards in Mississippi. And then, of course, education. MEC has been at the forefront of education since as long as anyone can remember. From Blake and Jim Barksdale and Dr. Lori Smith came into my office, the lieutenant governor, and said, we really got this new idea about early childhood education. It's called building blocks. Well, let's get started. And a lot of you were a part of that, supporting building blocks. And now, now as we move forward, as I was in Washington yesterday, as I spoke last night, to the Reagan Institute. Yeah, last night I had to sleep fast, get up real early this morning to make it back here, but I wasn't going to miss this. Not my last MEC. Well, it won't be my last, but last is governor. But as I was so honored last night to speak to the Reagan Institute on education in Mississippi and, and being chairman of the Education Commission of the States, telling them how we won the Frank Newman Award, which is the Heisman Trophy for public education telling them how our third graders went from passing their reading exam from 48% when I came into office and last time they took their reading exam, third graders, 94% of them passed that test. That's real numbers and real futures. How now we have more children graduating from high school than any time in Mississippi's history. 84% of our students, and we're almost there, 84% are now on the national average are graduating from high school. See, that's never happened before. It's happening now. You heard about those 35,000 jobs. Those are jobs that, were helped, that we helped work with the private sector to create through MDA and through our members of the Mississippi legislature that's always been there with us. Every time I go to them and say, I've got another company coming in and I need your help, they step up. It is a bipartisan issue. Economic development, creating jobs. It's not Democrat, not Republican. Every one of them step up. What's some remarkable things that have happened? Glenn McCullough and his team at MDA, they've helped create with the private sector those 35,000 jobs, but there's 82,000 more people working today than were working the day I took office. We put a lot of people to work. That's a good thing. Working right here in Mississippi, unemployment's the lowest that it's ever been, 4.7%. It was about 9.4% when I came into office. I didn't do all of these things. I, I like to brag about it because you don't get to hear the good things about Mississippi. People in Washington, the Reagan has two calls and says, why don't you come and talk to us because we hear good things about Mississippi. I don't know how it got out, but it's getting out. They're hearing the great things that are happening because of the people in large part in this room. People in this room and those star students back there. Lex and I were talking about making a 35 on the ACT. I think if you doubled mine, I'd get to 34 maybe. <laughs> Amazing. But these, these star students and their teachers, that's what makes Mississippi great. Governors come and go. Yeah. But those star students and those teachers and what you do, MEC, it stays. What you're able to help us do in the Mississippi legislature is we go in and just this, this year, the Landowner Protection Act, how important that is. You see, every time I go talk to a company now, I can say you don't get penalized just because you own property in Mississippi. We're going to help protect you. Mississippi Infrastructure Modernization Act, $200 million every year. More, $200 million more going into infrastructure every year. How we're leading in health care now. You know, we've got a new medical school. I hear it's a pretty nice one. We've got a medical city down in Harrison County at Traditions. 
We're about to make another huge announcement in addition to that where there's a brand new pharmacy school, new physicians, the, uh, the Cleveland's Clinic Obesity and Diabetes Research Center, all of it there. The, the, uh, the Mississippi Gulf Coast Nursing Center that will have about 6,000 students in it. It's a medical city. We just went out in the middle of the piney woods and said we're going to build a medical city right here because we can. And we're doing it. Great things happen in this state. Talent. How about these young ladies you just heard? Isn't that Mississippi? Didn't you just kiss me in Mississippi? How cool is that? I want one of those t-shirts. Yeah. yeah, I'm wearing that everywhere I go. How wonderful this place is. How fortunate it is that five years after the founding of this great organization, this little boy born in Moorhead, Mississippi. Dad was a diesel mechanic. Mom's parents farmed the land. Grew up with two older brothers. Now that's a character builder, two older brothers. But the opportunities that that young country boy had are amazing. Because of this wonderful state, that young man one day became governor of the state of Mississippi. It's the amazing part about this hospitality state that we live in. But the success is not that of the governor or the legislature, or the senators, house members. It's the success of the people. The people of the state of Mississippi will these great things to happen. They allow us and these public offices to do their work. As the sovereigns of this state, they empower us with the ability to join with you in moving this great state forward. So I want to thank you. It's been an amazing time. Now, about the first of the year, Deborah and I are going to try to figure out how to pack up what we've got left. There's going to be a truck pull up, and about the next day, maybe the 4th or 5th of January, I'm going to be homeless and unemployed and loving it. People ask me sometimes, don't you wish you could run again? I said, look, if you want to do this job more than eight years, you need to see somebody about that. We're going to finish strong. We're going to work to the last day. We're going to make you proud. We're going to continue to make Mississippi great because that's the wonderful honor that I have of being governor of the greatest state in America. MEC, thank you so much for what you have done for this remarkable state we call home. God bless you all. This is the State Chamber of Commerce, so when they come to the legislature, people listen. When they go to Washington, our senators and congressmen pay attention. It is it vitally important to continue to have this leadership organization there and working. It makes my job a lot easier and it makes Mississippi a lot better.